Okay, today we're going to talk about a few notes on integrated passive components and S parameters. And the reason for talking about passive components is when we're making amplifiers, the performance of the passive components is often as important as the active components in determining how the, uh, the overall parameters uh, of the amplifier are going to behave. For, in for instance, noise figure, gain, uh, efficiency, etc. The first component that we'll talk about is a spiral inductor, and this is where we take a piece of metal and we wind it inward on itself uh, in order to create a spiral-like geometry, uh, and we use that spiral-like geometry to create uh, what looks like a partial inductance. So current flows in the spiral, uh, and due to flux linkage, we uh, get uh, an inductance, uh, and the current itself causes image currents to flow in the substrate. Sometimes these image currents are called eddy currents. And the reason they're called eddy currents is an eddy is like a small whirlpool. So a spiral flowing in the substrate might uh, look to us from a graphical perspective like a small whirlpool flowing in the substrate. The material of the substrate influences the loss in the inductor heavily, uh, particularly because this eddy current that flows uh, in the material uh, will have ohmic losses. CMOS is a particularly bad material because the substrate uh, impedance is typically fairly low on the order of 1 to 10 ohms per centimeter. In an RF process, we may be able to get this up to somewhere around an under 100 ohm centimeters, but uh, nonetheless, it's a fairly low number. If we were to use another material like gallium arsenide or any other 3,5 material, it's typically better because the substrate uh, typically acts as more of an insulator. And we want the substrate to be a perfect insulator, and the reason for that is that if it was, no current would flow in the insulator, and so no loss would, uh, no ohmic loss would occur. So let's examine the structure just a little bit more. Uh, if we look at the structure, we can see uh, from above, we've got some substrate material that the inductor is built over. And then we've got some lower metallization that we use to, uh, to get the uh, terminal out of the inductor uh, as it spirals in on itself. And finally, we've got some top metal that the inductor is usually made on. If we dissect the inductor and look at a cross-section, we can see what it looks like in the z-dimension. And in our cross-section, we have, again, our top metal. We have some lower metal where the crossover is. We have our substrate, and we might have a via to connect the metals. And of course, as you would expect, we have resistance and inductance in the metals, and we have resistance in the substrate. Now we can extract what we call a nine element lumped model using these parasitic elements. And the nine element lumped model consists of our spiral inductance, the metallization resistance, some capacitance down to the substrate, some resistance in the substrate, and some shunt capacitance relates to metal coupling to metal. Uh, that bridges from the input terminal to the output terminal. So if we examine this a little bit closer, the uh, inductance L spiral is the partial inductance from the spiral metallization. R metal represents the ohmic loss from finite conductivity in the metal. C bridge represents capacitance due to metal overlap. And C aux represents the capacitance due to substrate. Finally, we have the term uh, R silicon, RSI, which is ohmic loss 
due to eddy currents. And we have our C silicon or CSI, which is a fitting parameter. And it's a non-physical parameter that helps us to mimic some frequency dependency in the substrate losses. If we examine the impedance of the spiral inductor at low frequencies, the, sp the structure behaves like an inductor. That is, the impedance increases at 20 dBs per decade. And here we have L spiral dominating. At some frequency that we're going to call SRF, the self-resonant frequency, the structure resonates and the parasitic capacitance starts to dominate. And the impedance decreases at 20 dBs per decade. Our self-resonant frequency in these structures tends to be approximately equal to 1 over 2 pi times the square root of L spiral times C bridge. When we're doing a basic inductor design, oftentimes we can use a low frequency estimate for the, uh, based on the geometry and we can optimize it using EM simulators. And if you're interested in finding uh, where you can do these low frequency estimates, I'll put a few references here. So the greenhouse calculations are very good to do these low frequency approximations for inductance. Uh, and they were in transactions on parts, hybrids, and packaging, volume 10, issue two in June of 1974. And my own master's thesis uh, related to using these calculations to uh, estimate uh, performance in spiral transformers. Uh, and that was from August of 2005.